On October 15th, Kelowna voters will go to the polls to elect a new city council, including a new mayor. Incumbent Mayor Colin Bazran joins us this morning. Go, Colin, good morning. Yeah, good morning. And hopefully not a new mayor. Hopefully they're going to return the one that's currently in the position. Why are you running for a third term? Oh, there's a lot of different reasons. Um, one, because I, I love this city and my passion for this city has not waned uh, in the 11 years that I've been on council. In fact, it's, uh, it's only strengthened. Um, it's an exciting time for the community. We are uh, becoming more progressive, uh, inclusive. Uh, there's a number of uh, really great initiatives that I want to see move forward. But at the end of the day, it comes down to wanting to continue to build a really great city for my kids to grow up in. And so that's why I would like to uh, you know, serve as a, th you know, a third term as uh, the city of Kelowna mayor. Why should the voters of Kelowna entrust you with the keys to their city? for the next four years? Um, well, I think when you look at the fact that we're one of the fastest growing cities in Canada, I think speaks volumes to the fact that so many people want to be here. Um, there's a lot of great things happening. We have record low unemployment. Uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, we're growing uh, and attracting uh, progressive people who want to uh, help be a part of uh, solving the uh, issues that our community is facing. Um, but at the end of the day, it also comes down to leadership and great relationships with higher levels of government. The issues that our city is facing require partnership, require collaboration. These aren't things that city council can solve on its own, particularly when it comes to uh, our crime issues, um, the social issues we're seeing on our streets, as well as affordability. These are not things that are just um, problems that Kelowna is facing, but uh, communities right across the country are uh, being challenged with. And so if we have good relationships with our provincial and federal government, we're going to get the help that we need to help tackle some of these really tough issues. And I believe that uh, through my experience as your mayor the last eight years, these relationships are very strong and are now bearing fruit. Unfortunately for the average resident of, of, of the city, the buck stops at your office. They want results. Over the last eight years, affordability has is, is, is tripled. Uh, almost for, in, in home prices, crime is, is increasing, homelessness, social issues, these are transportation, traffic, these are all getting worse and worse. And uh, I mean, of course, the city is responsible for clean drinking water. It's responsible for, you know, picking up your trash, cleaning your roads, building your sidewalks. But still, the buck stops with you. They want results. They want them now. Fair enough. And like I've said, though, uh, you know, let's take the top two issues that I believe are facing our community right now. Uh, the crime and social issues, uh, as well as transportation uh, and affordability. So, well, that's three. So let's, let's focus on crime and safety and affordability. Uh, when it comes to crime and safety, again, this is not an issue that is only impacting Kelowna. We are seeing crime rates and, and social issues uh, play out on streets right across the country. I lead a group of mayors in the, in the province of British Columbia called the BC Urban Mayors Caucus. Um, I can tell you that the 13 mayors who belong to that group are all facing the same thing. So we need to tackle uh, the crime and safety issues through partnership with the provincial government. So we heard last week as an example, as a result of lobbying that myself, uh, City Council and the BC Urban Mayor's Caucus has done, uh, the province has introduced recommendations to fundamentally change uh, the justice and health care systems as it pertains to repeat offenders. Because here in the city of Kelowna, for example, we know that uh, 15 individuals last year were responsible for over 1,000 touches with police. But we know that those 15 individuals, the majority of them, have mental health and addiction issues. So the, I know the easy, quick and easy answer or, or suggestion by some is, well, they just need longer jail terms. Um, let's just get harder on consequences. Now, don't get me wrong. I am absolutely a firm believer in consequences. And uh, those who are continually breaking into our homes and our businesses deserve to be punished. However, if they have an underlying mental health or addiction issue, how does locking them up mean that they're now going to come out of jail rehabilitated? Uh, the likelihood is very slim. So we need to not only recognize that yes, consequences need to be faced, but a repeat offender with a mental health or addiction issue also needs to get the supports that they need to get treatment. Um, so I'm pleased by these recommendations that will include 
uh, more treatment options. I'm pleased uh, about uh, these recommendations because it means that uh, violent repeat offenders will be involuntarily held and kept off our streets, which is a good thing. Uh, I was pleased to see one of the recommendations um, ask for more uh, resources for our Crown prosecutors because we know that their workload, particularly here in Kelowna, is quite heavy and as a result uh, property crimes oftentimes are, aren't being taken as seriously as they need to be. So there's a number of different things that uh, we have advocated for that are going to make change. We can't just keep doing things the same that, as we always have. We continue to invest in our CMP officers, yet we aren't seeing a difference on our streets. And part of the reason is because people are just being caught and released and not having their underlying mental health or addiction issue dealt with. We need to do that and it starts with providing homes for people if they are able to um, and then getting them so the supports they need which is also why I was an advocate for complex care housing because we know that those with the most complex mental health and addiction issues in our city still remain on our streets. They need to be housed, they also need to get intensive 24-7 supports to turn their lives around and to get the help that they need. You talk about your collaboration, you talk about your leadership. Uh, on your Facebook page you posted a, a picture of uh, an award the city won at, at UBCM a few weeks ago uh, with the caption, Col uh, collaboration and partnerships uh, better than bickering and finger pointing. And you pin yourself on a collaborator, uh, being inclusive, uh, etc. The incident at your uh, your inaugural or your kickoff campaign with with uh, candidate Ron Cannon, uh, where you asked him to leave rather uh, <laughs> forcefully, might we say, is that an example of leadership and collaboration? Even though I know he wasn't invited, there are underlying. But is that could that not have been handled better? Um, for sure it could have. And I think that uh, when you look at my overall track record uh, of the past 11 years on council, uh, certainly it speaks to uh, collaboration and as a result of all of the um, you know, funding we've received from higher levels of government speaks to my ability to build relationships, particularly with uh, the federal and provincial governments. Um, you know what? We all want to hold up this one example. Uh, it's one example of uh, thousands of interactions I've had with uh, residents and um, other people uh, that deal with the city uh, on a regular basis. Um, it's unfortunate how this one incident played out, uh, but I don't think we should let one incident taint um, an entire body of work. And in 11 years, uh, when you look at the amount of grant funding um, and uh, partnerships that have been built uh, through the city of Kelowna with uh, agencies and, and higher levels of government, um, they are very strong. Uh, could the event at my campaign kickoff been handled uh, better? Of course it could have. Um, do I have some regrets? Yeah, absolutely I do. But at the end of the day, uh, I'm human. I make mistakes. And uh, I'm also human in the sense that, um, yeah, you're going to come across people in your life who um, you don't agree with or who do things to you that hurt your feelings. And could I have handled that better? Yeah, I probably could have. Uh, certainly not uh, the example I want to set, but it's one isolated incident. Um, and when you look at the collaboration and the partnerships that the City of Kelowna has built over the last 11 years, um, certainly that is um, what I'm most proud of. Uh, and uh, one incident does not uh, sort of um, set the, the record or, or um, uh, paint everything that I've done in a negative light. If you're fortunate enough to be re-elected, if Ron is fortunate enough to be elected, are you able to shake his hand and say, let's get to work? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and in fact, my plan is to uh, have a conversation with him uh, well before that uh, to, uh, to ensure that that's the case. Your council over the last four and eight years, actually, because it's basically been the same council, has been accused of rubber stamping development. Bring it all in. We'll develop anything. We'll develop anywhere. You want 46 stories, we'll do it. 40 stories, great. It doesn't matter. Bring it on. Let's build it. Your response to that? Yeah, sure. So uh, thank you for the question. It's an opportunity to touch on the other point uh, that I wanted to raise earlier, which is affordability. Uh, we know that we need housing of all types in our city. And um, so it, it, it's, it's funny that we get accused of uh, not building enough housing and affordability is going through the roof but on the other hand then there's others who say you're approving too much and there's too much development happening. Um, we know we need housing for residents in our community of all types. 
And uh, so we have the plans in place uh, that make sure that the housing is put in the appropriate areas. Uh, so we have an official community plan that spells out where the high density neighborhoods are in our five urban centers uh, and then where uh, other types of housing go around those urban centers. So if you take a look at what council has actually done, where those high rises are going are in areas where we said those are where our tallest buildings should be. Uh, there are a number of factors that go into whether we grant a height variance for uh, a, an individual project um, and it depends on the type of housing that's being provided, the amenities that are, are going to be provided, um, where in the community it is. Uh, so there's a number of different factors that go into granting a variance. Um, but this notion that we just rubber stamp everything when uh, keeping in mind uh, it wasn't that long ago where we turned down the Thompson Flats development, which would have increased sprawl in our community. Uh, just a few weeks ago, City Council turned down a three-tower proposal downtown because it wasn't inside the areas where we said we wanted to see our tallest buildings. So we're trying to strike a balance. And so we know we have affordability issues. And uh, again, Kelowna is not the only community facing these issues. But what are the things that City Council can control? Well. We can control how quickly a project goes through the development process because if projects are delayed, it means that uh, added costs are added to that development and it means that those uh, units aren't available for residents to, to live in. So we have one of the fastest development application processes in our community. Uh, we also have incentive programs to incentivize developers to build the types of housing we want. We know that we need more rental housing in our community. So we have rental incentives um, that are provided to developers to build rental only projects and we've seen thousands of rental units come on board and, and uh, are now occupied in our community as a result of those incentives. Uh, we also I think need to uh, look into more incentives to uh, create what's called missing middle housing which is uh, oriented more towards families. Two and three bedroom units which we know um, is a challenge for families in our community to find. So I'm open to, to those. Uh, I also know that um, this the provincial government has processes that are causing projects to be delayed. For example, the Ministry of Transportation uh, has to approve a development within 800 meters of Highway 97. Well, we have a highway that runs right through the middle of our city. Uh, and the Ministry of Transportation approvals can add anywhere from 18 to 24 months uh, time in terms of a development application getting approved. That's not acceptable. That 18 to 24 months could be construction time where we could get those units to market or uh, open and available to our residents. And as a result of advocacy that Council and I have done, the Minister of Transportation is now looking at those processes uh, and uh, going to find ways to help shorten those uh, approval times as a result of advocacy done right here in the City of Kelowna. So um, we also have uh, adopted things like the Infill Challenge which has uh, helped us create more family housing where we've taken a single family lot and allowed up to four units to be placed on that and we've just done the Infill Challenge 2.0 which is an update of that to again create more of that missing middle family style housing. And of course the other thing that we've done through our official community plan update and our new zoning bylaw is that some properties in our community, particularly in our urban center, are now pre-zoned for development, which means now a developer doesn't have to go through a rezoning process, they just skip right to the development permit or the development variance permit application, which will speed up the process time and, uh, and get projects under construction and available to our residents residents who need it in a quicker amount of time. So uh, there's a lot going on on the affordability front and uh, to create more housing. Um, but at the end of the day, we know we need more. And so it's a, a difficult task, um, but one that we're up for the challenge to help, uh, to help solve. But this notion that we just um, approve everything is not true. Um, but yet we're trying to do what we can to provide as much housing as we can uh, for those who need it. Can you justify um, speaking of developers, uh, living in uh, the home of a developer uh, for several months um, and also at the same time seeing development applications? I mean, is there not yeah, a I'm not, I'm not sure how the uh, conflict? Sure, I'm not sure how it's a conflict given the fact that um, the, uh, the person who owned the house that I was renting uh, has never had an, approv uh, an approval or an application before me. Um, so he is a homeowner just like anyone else in this community and has the ability to rent his home. Um, and so that's what I was doing. So uh, had he had an application before council that uh, um, came across my desk, I obviously would have declared a conflict. So I think it's just um, 
uh, an opportunity by some to distract from the fact that uh, this applicant ha or this owner has never had an application before council and um, I, I've, I've done nothing wrong. I, I rented a home, I lived in it, uh, going through a, a difficult time, a period in my life um, and um, you know it is what it is but there's nothing to hide and um, yeah I, I think I would just leave it there. Before we turn the cameras off, I want to give you a chance to look right in the camera, talk to the, uh, the residents, uh, the voters of Kelowna, and give them your best pitch. Why should they vote Colin Bazaran October 15th? Yeah, I appreciate that. Well, it's been an honor to, uh, to serve the residents of Kelowna, and uh, I would say why I would like to continue to be your mayor, and I hope I have your support, is because um, the issues facing our community um, are going to require uh, strong leadership. Uh, as well as collaboration with higher levels of government. Uh, the crime and safety, the social issues, affordability, uh, these are not things that City Council can tackle on their own. These are issues that are uh, being faced by communities right across the country. But what I can tell you is that the plans we have in place and the actions that we're taking are making a real difference. The City of Kelowna is seen as leaders when it comes to uh, these issues. And uh, I can tell you that uh, empty threats or, or promises uh, aren't going to get us through this. Um, and, and keeping in mind that uh, we are going to need continued investment from the provincial and federal governments to tackle some of these things. We're going to need systemic changes to our justice and healthcare systems for people to get the, uh, the help and face the consequences that they deserve if they're breaking the law. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the last thing I want to point out is that uh, election campaigns often draw out the negative. We want to focus on the things that are wrong with our community, but I really want everyone to just take a step back and really truly recognize that this is an amazing place to live. There are some incredible things happening, and please don't let the negativity drown out all of the great things that all of us are accomplishing together. Thanks. Colin Bazaran, incumbent mayor. Good luck October 15th. Thank you.